Dry tropical forests are diverse ecosystems consisting mainly of deciduous trees which, unlike the evergreen trees, shed their foliage in dry season. This biome has less biodiversity than the rainforest biome. In the tropical dry forests, there is a symbiotic relationship, mutualism. An example of mutualism is the acacia tree and ants. The tree provides the ants with tunnels and fruit, while the ants protect the trees. The tropical dry forest biome, also known as the dry broadleaf forest, can be found in southern Mexico, southeastern Africa, central India, Indochina, Madagascar, eastern Bolivia, central Brazil, the Caribbean, and along the coast of Ecuador and Peru. Typically, the tropical dry forests are located at tropical and subtropical latitudes. An example of a landform located in the tropical dry forest is the Papagayo River located in Mexico. Climate of a tropical dry forest is both seasonal and tropical with an average temperature that is more than 65 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 20 degrees Celsius, and the average rainfall is between 40 to 100 inches. Several months of heavy rainfall are followed by extreme dry periods. The dry periods are about five months long, and the wet periods are about seven months long with prominent rainfall. Tropical dry forests have many abiotic factors. The tropical dry forests are warm all year round, have abundance of sunlight, the soil is very rich and essential to plants and animals living there, and is subject to erosion, seasonal nature, and precipitation. The tropical dry forest has many dominant animals and plants. The big six animals are the lion, the Asian elephant, puma, brown-throated sloth, ring-tailed lemur, and insects. The big six plants are broadleaf evergreen trees, agaves, deciduous trees, drought-tolerant orchids, bromelades, and acadia trees. Food web of some animals in the tropical dry forest the sun is the primary producer that gives energy and life to the producers and decomposers. The arrows pointing towards to the next level of consumers indicate that they are being eaten. There are many producer-consumer relationships in these food webs. Examples are that insects are producers, and primary consumers such as deer or squirrels eat the producers. Then secondary consumer ringtail lemur will eat the primary consumer squirrel. The tertiary consumer coyote will then eat the ringtail femur. One producer and consumer relationship that exists is the mule deer and the flower. The mule deer is the primary consumer that eats the producer, the flower. Here is another food web where we see many producer consumer relationships going on. It's important to have many producer-consumer relationships because it keeps the ecosystem balanced. In this food web, we see the orchid is a producer for butterflies and worms, while grass is also consumed by butterflies. Primary consumers have many options, and so do secondary and tertiary consumers. When animals live in a certain biome, they learn to adapt to that biome. For example, Lions have rough tongues, which helps them to peel off skin of their prey. They also have a roar that is used between them to tell if there are any intruders. The Asian elephants have no sweat glands because they live primarily in the tropical areas. Instead of having sweat glands, they flap their ears to create another way to cool themselves off. Pumas have a specifically textured tongue with rasping hooks to help groom fur and peel meat and skin from bones, just like the lions. The main food source of the brown-throated sloth is leaves. Because leaves are very hard to digest, the brown-throated sloths have a large, special-acting stomach with multiple compartments to help break down leaves easily. The ring-tailed lemur grips well with their hands and feet in trees to move swiftly. They cannot grip onto tree branches with their tails like many other lemurs can. They spend a good amount of time on the ground, which most lemurs do not. 
Because they spend time walking on the ground, they are good at it, unlike the rest of the lemurs. Insects adapt by ways of camouflage. They can do this in forms of changing their color or shaping themselves to look like sticks, leaves, and more. Along with animals, plants adapt to their biomes too. Broadleaf evergreen trees adapt by not losing their leaves like most deciduous trees. They can lose leaves bits by bits, but not all at one time. Agaves have spiky leaves which contain the stored water and fiber. This helps them adapt by making it less likely for a predator to eat them. Deciduous trees adapt by losing their leaves in the fall and changing colors due to the chlorophyll breaking down. Orchids have roots that absorb lots of water and nutrients. This helps them adapt when a drought comes around so that they have enough of what they need to live. The bromeliad has a recently new adaptation known as the tank habit, which allows them to have a well-developed root system with a tightly bound structure between their leaves. This helps them to absorb water and nutrients. Cacti adapt to their environment by having spines instead of leaves. These spines reduce the amount of water loss. The spines also help protect the cacti from predators that might eat them. Even if you may think you have never seen a tropical dry forest in real life, you may have seen one in popular Disney movies. The movies The Lion King 2 and Tarzan take place in dry tropical forests.